Hi, Dr. Mayberry here. This is our lab discussion about the upper limb. This lecture material is fair game for the lab practical. I like to start our skeletal discussions about the limbs, uh, reminding you that much of what you're looking at is part of an evolutionary process. Well, all of what you're looking at is. Uh, so if you understand the human limbs, the human skeleton, that gives you an inherent understanding of other skeletal anatomy uh, across the animal kingdom. So we are tetrapods. That just means that we have four feet. We call two of them hands and two of them feet, uh, but effectively we have, we have four limbs and we have four feet. So that's what a tetrapod is. You are a tetrapod. Uh, with tetrapods, and you can see in the image here, uh, we have you know cats, whales, bats, all, all of these are included in, in the tetrapod group, uh, as are you know, many more organisms. So what we see there is one proximal bone uh, in the arm in this case, that's the humerus, two intermediate bones, the ulna and the radius, that's your forearm, uh, rows of podials in humans, we call them carpals in the upper limb and tarsals in the lower limb, and then phalanges, which are the fingers. Uh, and then you, of course, have your soft tissue, your muscles. So you have dorsal and ventral musculature, uh, and those are your extensors and your flexors. Uh, so this is common for, it's for your arms, it's for your legs, and it's the same in, you know, all of these uh, animals that are on this list and many more. So that is what it is to be a tetrapod. Uh, I also like to show you that we have uh, evolutionary characteristics that differentiate us between different you know, organismal groups. So here you have reptiles and you have mammals in this image. Who even knows what kind of mammal that's supposed to be, but it's a mammal. And we see here that we have massive changes to the pectoral girdle. And so that's, you know, your pecs are you know, in your, your breast area. Uh, and so that's changes in how the upper limb is attached to the thorax. So with these reptiles, you see that the upper limbs sort of extend outside uh, of the body to the side. And with mammals, where it's, it's well, it's more below uh, in the case of this mammal. So you have some major changes to the scapula, to the clavicle, uh, where the upper limb is attaching. And that gives us better mobility. So you can sort of imagine how this reptile would move, or you can watch a reptile move, versus how a mammal moves. Uh, we move very differently. We don't have to, you know, slither uh, and, and sort of rotate back and forth to get those upper limbs moving. We have more compression-loaded upper limbs uh, and just better mobility in general. So we see these major differences uh, in, you know, evolutionary characteristics there. So these are the bones that you need to know for the upper limb. And of course, we go through many, many landmarks on all of them. Uh, so you need to watch the landmark videos. You need to study uh, your landmark lists and your skeletal image sheets to learn not only these bones, but the landmarks on them. So you have the clavicle, which people call their, um, what do people call that? The collarbone. Uh, your scapula, which is your shoulder blade. Your humerus, which is your arm. Radius and ulna are the forearm. Carpals are your wrist bones. Metacarpals are basically the body of the hand. And then your phalanges are your fingers. And I've listed the eight carpals in the human wrist here. Uh, you do need to know the names of those and the order that they're in. So when we talk about hominoids, we're talking about specifically in our ape human lineage here. So here we're looking at changes to the hominoid shoulder from other mammal shoulders. So we, you know, don't stand as that mammal in that previous slide stands. So our shoulder is yet different. Uh, and we have a more posteriorly located scapula. So this is a human uh, thorax. These are the ribs. This is the clavicle and this is the scapula. And it's on your back. Right? If someone is looking at the back of you, uh, under that skin that they're looking at is the scapula. This is a monkey, a macaque. This is their rib cage. You can see that it's a different shape. The clavicle goes at a slightly different angle and it also is a slightly different shape. And then the scapula is on their side. Right? They're quadrupeds. They use their arms and hands to walk. Right? Um, they do other things with them as well, but they do, you know, they are important for their mobility. 
our arms, we don't walk on our arms. We use our arms uh, to hang from things, to carry things. We say we have a very generalized upper limb. We can do a lot of things with it, uh, but we don't tend to use it to walk. So it doesn't need to be in front of us, right? It's, it's more to the side. So the musculature changes as well. You know that the layout of the bones, the actual, you know, you know, one proximal, two intermediate arm bones, that's the same. We talked about that in the tetrapod slide. But we have, you know, different connection uh, and different location, very slightly, of those bones because we use them differently. These are scapulas from uh, different hominoids. So the muscle attachments on the scapulas are different. You know, the vertebral border is shaped differently. Uh, the glenoid fossa, where the humerus articulates, is shaped differently depending on the locomotor pattern. So whether you're a quadruped or a biped or a brachiator, uh, we see differences in the shape of these bones due to locomotor pattern. We also see changes in the elbow. You can fully extend your elbow, but a cat can't. Uh, even a macaque can't. So we actually have a shorter olecranon process than a quadruped has. So the olecranon process is this most proximal portion of the ulna, uh, and this is on a cat. It's very similar on a monkey. Uh, so ours is much shorter, so you can extend it. Right, it goes into the olecranon fossa on the humerus, uh, which you know has to contain the whole olecranon process, which is what allows your arm to extend. So we have that. We have a more rounded radial head on the radius, and in terms of soft tissue, our brachialis muscle actually has greater power. You wouldn't be tested on that, but you will be tested on the skeletal anatomy. We also have more mobile digits. Uh, so we have five digits, as do you know, hominin in general, uh, and really much more than the hominin. We looked at the tetrapod list. Uh, you can watch this video if you want to. The link uh, is on the PowerPoint file, uh, so you can click on it. Uh, but you have you know, your five digits, and your thumb is opposable. And that's because the joint in the thumb, we call it a cellar joint, it allows you know, your thumb, you can right now touch your thumb to all of your other fingers. Uh, and this is really valuable to us. It allows us to grasp things. Uh, our digits are very mobile, and that's generally seen in primates, though our hand is more mobile uh, and has better grasping and motor control than other primates. So that's what the video is showing you. It's showing you the changes in mobility in the human hand from the gorilla hand, I believe. Uh, and so a lot of that also has to do with locomotor patterns. Um, the gorillas are knuckle walkers, so they have um, stronger soft tissue uh, attachments like, like ligaments and tendons in their hands, which in some ways decreases mobility. So you can observe that in the video. Here are the hand bones laid out for you. We will discuss them in class. Uh, I discussed them in one of the landmark videos as well. So again, I am showing you the carpals, the metacarpals, and then the phalanges. And you always have your proximal, intermediate, and distal phalanx on these four digits. And on the thumb, you have the proximal and distal phalanx. So you need to know these. You can remember a mnemonic device. This is one of them. Uh, there are others but you do need to be able to identify these on the lab practical. Okay, so that concludes our upper limb lab discussion. Uh, so remember to you know, study this material for the lab practical as well as the bones in the landmark lists.